it going, everybody? This is the Nitty Gritty. My name is Chad. With me, as usual, is Leonard. This is a show about wrestling. And this week, we are going to be reviewing the most recent Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble from 2003. If memory serves, it is the 35th. Royal 2023. You said 2003. Did I? Yes. Now we're not, we're not reviewing the 2003 Rumble. It's actually the 2023 Rumble. Royal Rumble. Now, I don't want to look to see would see what the 2003 Rumble was. I don't remember specifically what that one was. That might have been Lesnar. I don't know. Okay. Um, anywho, we are going to be reviewing the most recent Royal Rumble for you, and it take took place from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, and it took place on Saturday. Um, started about eight o'clock, and there were no uh, preliminary matches, no dark matches, no. Uh, you know, early matches, what have you, whatever they're called these days. Mm. Um, so let's just go over the show starting. And obviously... Before you do that, I will say I, I uh, did not watch the Hardy concert. Right. And I did not watch the post-media scrum. No, I didn't watch the post-media scrum. I mean, I was awake for Hardy singing the song that they did, and we'll get there. Um um, I forgot to mention that all is right with the world, Leonard. The Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. And uh, I don't know who, as we speak, we don't know who's going to win between the Chiefs and the Bengals. As I yes. said, the Chiefs are ahead. Um, At the time of this taping. And while I am in Ohio, I am not a Bengals fan, so I won't be breaking out the orange and black next week. Well, that's all right. Uh, I personally am hoping for Mahomes, not because I have anything against the Bengals, but I want to see the Eagles beat. Patrick Mahomes. I'm tired of his face, and that's just how all I have to say about that. <laughs> Anywho, good enough. Back to wrestling. Um, so, the Alamo Dome and the Rumble, as of late, I want to say over the past five years, they have gone to domes almost exclusively now for this event because it's one of them. It's the second most popular wrestling event of the year. So, yeah. and. Now that they've gone to these domes, you have these super long entrance ways. And in my opinion, it takes away from something. And that would be, especially when the countdown goes down, you find out who's coming out. There's a pop for the person when they're announced. But then you have to wait like five minutes for them to get to the ring. And by that point, you know, the crowd doesn't care anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and until you're eating up so much of their time that you're basically doing minute intervals. Right. Because it takes at least 30 seconds for the person to get to the ring. Right. Unless, you know, even running, even running in a full sprint. So, right. I, I, you know, we were talking on, you know, texting back and forth a little bit. And after the first few entries, I was like, are they doing minute entries? This feels really quick. And it was like, oh, no, it's just because it's taking them so long. Yeah. To get to the ring. And I want to say it was probably a minute and a half or so. Um, I don't know if that's if the time has been confirmed. I certainly didn't use a stopwatch. I watched this with my uh, family and uh, my girls and Stephanie. They all watched uh, the event with me. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun. The girls were able to stay up the whole night and watch it if they so choose to do that. Uh, half of my family went to bed before the rains. And Kevin Owens match, though, because it was pretty late by that point. So, anywho... Um, the first match, well, let's, before the first match, let's talk about the surprise at the beginning of the show, if you want to call it that, was that Pat McAfee, who recently went to ESPN, I believe, um, and I think he has a position there, um, they brought him back for this, so it was Corey Graves, Michael Cole, and Pat McAfee as your commentators. As Leonard texted, this took a while for this all finish and pack yeah. McAfee to come out. His it was like a 10 minute oversell. Yeah. I didn't care. I don't really care enough about that. No. Cole acted like Jesus came out. Right. Like nothing against him. You know, I don't dislike him, but like I didn't care enough. And I didn't think that this had to be a part of the main show. No, no, I did say, I, I, I will say I did like Graves and McAfee on commentary most of the night. I thought they got some funny lines in. I thought they had good chemistry with each other. And I like how they subtly dissed Cole. I don't think Cole understood how much shade that they were both throwing at him. Yeah. Every time he said something stupid. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so the first match of the night, surprisingly, was the men's 
Royal Rumble match. And when I saw that this was going to be the first match, a lot of questions, at least for me, were answered right away. I knew once the men were starting that we were not going to see The Rock, Aww. that we were not going to see Stone Cold, even though we were in Texas. I, re I figured that there probably wouldn't be a lot of surprise entrance as a result, because if they're going to start with the men, they were going to start with the men because they were going to have a pretty straightforward rumble overall. Yeah. And I would say that that's pretty much what it was. And that's not to say that because it was first, it was bad by any stretch. But uh, let's just uh, quickly go over the names that came in. Uh, so uh, starting from one, Gunther, then Sheamus, The Miz, Kofi Kingston, Johnny Gargano, Xavier Woods, Karrion Cross, Chad Gable, Drew McIntyre, Santos Escobar, Angelo Dawkins, Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley, Baron Corbin, Seth Rollins, Otis, Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, Elias, Finn Balor, Booker T, Damian Priest, Montez Ford, Edge, Austin Theory, Omos, Braun Strowman, Ricochet, Logan Paul, and Cody Rhodes. And it should be mentioned that Rey Mysterio was supposed to be 17, but uh, he did not come out. And I guess what's written here is that presumably it was an attack by Dominic, who then came out next wearing the Rey mask. From what I read, apparently Ray was injured uh, during the SmackDown match he had on Friday. Uh, they, I believe it was Karrion Cross, and so that they came up with that idea. I don't know why they just didn't substitute somebody else and say Ray was injured, but um, that was what they that that's what they did. They did the mask bit as a suggestion that Dominic had beat him up. Yeah. So that was what you had, and. <clears throat> Once we saw all 30 entrants, to me, it became really obvious who was going to be the winner. Um, because in my mind, before this match even started, assuming The Rock and Austin weren't going to be there, in my mind, the two regular roster guys that were, I would assume, top to win this would be Sami Zayn and Cody Rhodes. I almost, before it started, I almost didn't think they were going to go with Cody Rhodes because they were overhyping his return. They were like really, really pushing it every chance they could get in videos. And so I was like, maybe they're pushing this too strong. They wouldn't just do that, would they? Well, they did because Cody Rhodes ended up winning. Um, Gunther came in at one and lasted all the way to the end. He had the Iron Man role. And, uh, you know, what a performance by him. Uh, it was, he's, he, I, I like him a lot. I think he's really terrific. He's definitely a future champion. Uh, they had a big showdown with him and Brock Lesnar. It didn't last as long as it could have. But, um, you know, I, Leonard predicted that in text message. You could see it coming. Um, and it was – I but I liked it, though. Um, and the other big showdown was uh, – I forget who. There was another big showdown at the end. Um, but – so there were your usual Royal Rumble moments here, Leonard. I thought overall this Rumble was fine. I don't think it was near the top of the list, and I don't think it's near the bottom of the list. Um, what do you think? No, it was very much in the middle. You know, I think it actually helped that it went first, because I said this to you, I think, this morning, was that the problem for me it was that both Rumbles, and we're going to get to the Women's Rumble, told the same story. It was the exact same story, they did. more or less. You had the person at one running all the way to the end, you had a stable in the middle kind of controlling things until a heated rival came in and they all went out kind of all together at that point. You had one legend each. You had, um, uh, you know, tag partners coming out together back to back or rivals coming out back to back or just with one person in between them. So it, it, so it told the same story. So since the men went first, yeah. They came across better because they told the story first. And you know, so what? if you break it down that way, it was somewhat lazy in that mm -hmm. regard because whoever did it clearly, I mean, didn't have as much time as they thought they were when they were writing it all down. Um, because you, you're right, they do have a lot of parallels uh, between them. Um, and, you know, we'll get to the women's one. This one I thought was predictable, not as much so as the women's. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so Cody Rhodes won and, you know, I have to say that if Vince was in charge of creative, I don't think that they would have gone with Cody Rhodes here. Leonard, do you think they would have gone with him nonetheless? Um, that, that's a good question because I mean, Vince was in, in, in charge when Cody came in last year and they gave him the big play. Yeah, he was. But like, the reason I say that is because 
it's very I, I don't think it's ever happened that Vince would take a guy from a competing company and push him to the moon right away. And, you know, and so you see Triple H, who is now in charge of creative, and he has done that now. Um, and I, I'm assuming it's going to be Cody versus Reigns for both belts. But something could happen at Elimination Chamber. Who knows? But, um, but, but you know, I don't I don't know if, if, if Vince views Cody Rhodes as an AEW guy because he started with him in WWE. True. It's what Jim Cornette says all the time. Go away and learn a new hold and come back. And they did that with Drew McIntyre. Go away, learn a new hold, come back. So I, I don't think that there's any, oh, he's from AEW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't think Vince cares. I don't think he cares because he started with him. Now, if they get a Kenny Omega, then he's getting buried. He's getting buried. <laughs> but 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 he's what losing no, I, he's losing to almost in 30 seconds. Yes. One raw. Yes. But 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 Rose, I don't think that's there. Now, the only difference would be I could see where Vince would want to go with a bread and butter guy like Brock Lesnar. Right. Yeah. And that's one. And that's another thing I, I mentioned to you uh, via text was it seemed like the longer someone had been there, the bigger the pop they got. Yeah. Well, the newer guys, like Johnny Gargano, got nothing. No. He he got. It was dead. And I like Johnny Gargano a lot, but the yeah. only the only two new guys that got I think a good pop was Gunther to start and Dominic. Yeah. People and and my you know my my wife was in the living room was not really paying attention the only time she started paying attention was when dominic came out and the commentators were just roasting him yeah I mean, people, he was people, cracking up over that and i think this is one of the rare times when bruce pritchard actually mentioned on a recent podcast he they don't never talk about new stuff but he mentioned like you know like the crowd just hates him like but he's getting a reaction so yeah <laughs> so yeah he lasted he lasted a good bit uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just, just, just right. And you know, I forgot to. I was going to bring it down because you know, Edge was in here. Um, I have, uh, you know, I told you I'm on a Facebook group called Southern Wrestling Autographs. I'm getting autographs from. And I was in a uh, mystery envelope pool not too long ago. I won an Edge autograph. Nice. I'll have to bring. I'll have to bring some of the autographs next show. I'll bring some of the recent autographs I've won, and I'll show the people. That's a good one. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I thought this was fine for what – oh, as I'm looking over my notes here, what happened with Kofi Kingston? Was that, was that a botch? It had to have been because, you know, Stephanie, my wife, always looks forward to that spot. <laughs> she always looks forward to what Kofi's yeah. going to do. And so we saw it, and they never mentioned, at least to my ears, they never mentioned that he was actually eliminated. You saw him land on the chair, but – in my opinion, if you watched it live, he clearly touched. <laughs> yeah, and, and Cole kept saying, well, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. Yeah, and they just never mentioned it again because I think if they, once you really look at it, like he clearly touched the ground with both feet before he landed in that chair. Um, so they never mentioned that again, um, which was what it was. Uh, one spot that I thought was predictable was Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. I, I knew that – Oh, Lashley, yeah. And this goes along with the laziness. It's like Bobby Lashley comes out right after Brock Lesnar. Come on. Like, so uh, you knew that I was thought, I thought they were going to eliminate each other and just fight on the outside. Yeah. Up just Lashley eliminated Lesnar. That feud's going to continue because, you know, I don't think that they have what's rumored for Lesnar. And the rumor was that it was going to be him and Austin. And I just don't see that happening. I just don't. It might happen. I would love to come on here and say I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. Austin at his age, with the amount of injuries he's had in his career, going in the ring against somebody who does an F5 and swings you across the ring, I just don't see it. I no. just, but you know, Austin would do a brawl, a, a brawl with Owens. I mean, that worked last year. That works well, and you knew that Owens was going to take care of him. Yeah, and it was fine. I just don't see anything for Austin anymore. But who yeah. knows? Um, yeah, another thing to mention is the Logan Paul ricochet bit. Yeah, yeah. that was just stupid. It was because that was it, it was it was one of those things we're doing it because we think it looks cool. Yeah. And like look, the fact that Logan Paul was in it annoyed me um, and he had such a late number. And I was like, gosh, this would have been a great moment for a surprise. Yeah, he was twenty nine. Yeah. And it's just I, I don't know. I don't hit bad money. Logan Paul. I don't care. Sorry. I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, Cody Rose won and it was a good moment for him. And I'm assuming he's going to win the title or one of them at Mania. I would think yeah. anyway. Well, you know, I've heard a lot of rumors going around, and and um, th th there's talk about splitting the title belt. So Cody would win the WWE title on night one, 
and maybe Sammy would win the Universal title on night two or, or just Roman would defend it against them on night two. Right. I, I think what they're going to do is Owens and um, – Sami Zayn against the Usos. I know that there's the bit with, is it Jimmy or Jay? Because I never know the difference. Who walked out? Well, we'll get there. We'll get okay. there. Okay. We'll come back. Okay. So I want to say, so say that. But I, I, I have a different idea of what I think they might wind up doing. Um, before we leave the Rumble, I would, uh, I would like to just mention that I believe it was um, McAfee that had my favorite line. At the end, there will only be cockroaches, Twinkies, and Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, it should be noted that Gunther lasted one hour, 11 minutes, and 40 seconds. Longest Maybe. longest for a, a traditional 30-man rumble. Traditional rumble, yeah. So well, I, gave it, I gave it three and a quarter stars. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Yeah, it was good. It was good, but it was not great. And it was very formula. Yep. And the next match was L.A. Knight against Bray Wyatt in the first ever Mountain Dew Pitch Black match. And, you know, I understand from a business standpoint why they chose to do this mm -hmm. but from a wrestling purist perspective like this was just ridiculous it was basically like a match with black lights yeah it, lo it looked like a glow putt at your mall yeah you know and it was five minutes and five seconds bray wyatt ended this pretty quickly i think no one actually cared about this feud i think everybody's Still waiting to see who the hell Uncle Howdy is. We all now are assuming it's Bo Dallas. If it's anybody other than Bo Dallas, it's going to be an immense disappointment unless it's Erwin R. Scheister. That's the only other person, and for obvious reasons, right? Like, yeah. who else could it be under that mask that you would be like, wow, that's really cool? Well, at one point, people were rumoring it was Barry Wyndham, and then Barry Wyndham came up sick. Right. But and it's no... It's Barry Wyndham's old and is yes. not well, so, going to be flying off of uh, balconies like... Well, those were ton, though. It's got to be... Even if even if it's not Bo Dow's doing it right now, if it's just some random dude doing the bit, when the reveal is made, it should probably be Bo Dow's. If it's not, nothing else makes sense, because it's certainly not anyone else Bray has been associated with in the past because it's too small. It can't be Eric Redbeard or Strowman or, you know, it can't you be any you previous. Know really make me angry if it would, if they make us do a swerve and like, because of all their history, like somebody like Randy Orton. Oh yeah. I would hate that. Yeah. I can see him doing that though. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this match was just forgettable and not good. And yeah. And, and what was what was the table filled with? I mean, it was crazy. They go through a table, and then there's all these like these po polka confetti. dots, confetti. Why was why was the table filled with confetti? No one knows. It was just a, for a visual. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It was so stupid. I gave I gave it half a star because I gave him credit for trying an idea. I, I would go for one star, not for any reason other than what you said. Um, at the end, uh, you would see. Uh, Uncle Howdy uh, fly off of a, a balcony or a, a, a set piece uh, or whatever, and uh, you know there would be flames shooting up. Yeah. Why uh, is there fire? Right. It, you, yeah. This was just a train wreck. Um, so, moving along, the next match was for the WWE Raw Women's Championship: Alexa Bliss against Bianca Belair, and this was about seven minutes and thirty-five seconds. And Bianca Belair would win here. And again, you know, I, I think we were all hoping for something to further progress this Uncle Howdy storyline because Alexa Bliss is involved in that as well. Um, and so you would see him appear in the TV, but Alexa Bliss just lost clean and they're just continuing the storyline. They're going for the long game. I, I get it. Um, it just matches like this kind of just further prove that the Rumble Championship matches are really just filler. Yeah. They really are. Very rare is there any of them that, like, make a difference. I mean, unless you're going back to, like, the Cactus Jack Triple H feud, you know. Uh, so, yeah. So this match was fine. I gave it – I would go about three stars on this. Oh, no. I only gave it a star and a quarter um, because it was, it was physical and intense, and I like that part of it. But other than that, I think it was too rehearsed 
It was too short. I don't think Bianca Belair put a lot into it because she knew that this only exists so Alexa can do her 10 seconds afterwards with Uncle Howdy right. and and uh, all that. My favorite move was what I believe Corey Graves wound up calling the koala plex. Okay. You know what? You convinced me. I'll go two and a half. Okay. It was, it was just very much, as you said, filler. I mean, this would have opened raw. It was, it yeah. was quick. It was nothing. It only existed to get to that last 10 seconds after the match with Uncle Howdy. So, yes. Um, so, the next match would be the 30 woman Royal Rumble match. And I'll go over the names of the people that came out there, starting from number one Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Dana Brooke, Emma, Shayna Baszler, Bailey, B Fab, Roxanne Perez, Dakota Kai, EO Sky, Natalia, Candice LeRae, Zoe Stark, Zia Lee. Becky Lynch, Tegan Knox, Asuka, Piper Niven, Tamina, Chelsea Green, Zelina Vega, Raquel Rodriguez, Mia Yim, Lacey Evans, Michelle McCool, Indy Hartwell, Sonia Deville, Shotzi, Nikki Cross, and Nia Jax. And Rhea Ripley would come in at one and last the duration to be the winner. She stayed in there for one hour, one minute, and eight seconds. And Liv Morgan was the runner-up. She was number two, and she stayed in there for the same amount of time. Um, to me, this was definitely the lesser of the two Royal Rumble matches for the reason that Leonard mentioned earlier in that it paralleled the first one. And also, this one was super for, super predictable. Mm. There was no one else other than Bailey. I was like, the only other person they could conceivably go with to win this is perhaps Bailey, but they had Bailey and damage control do the faction thing for a while. And then Bailey got tossed fairly earlier than I expected her to. So after that, I was like, there is no one else. Mm -hmm. Liv Morgan has had her, her title run. They're not going to go with her again. So who else is there? And it's just Rhea Ripley because she's really the most over woman. that's not a champion right now mm -hmm. in the company. Yeah, well, Oscar was there at the end too as the third, and I think she she's won the first one, so I knew she wasn't going to win. Yeah, that. yeah, but she always feels like an old reliable that she could lean on. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, another thing that I that I didn't like about this was, uh, well, Nia Jax as a surprise was yeah. horrible. She's she's so delusional, I think, and what and what she thinks she's her place is in in professional wrestling. Um, but but what that caused was. I've, there were 11 people in the ring after the 30th person came out. I don't think that's ever happened where you've had a, a third of the field still there. Yeah. And it was because they wanted to do the spot where everybody eliminated Nia Jax. And, and, and because of that, your finishing sequence was overly long. Right. Now, Gunther and Rhodes had like a little mini match at the end that I thought was really cool. And that yeah. really want me to see them go head to head in a straight match. But this was still 11 ladies in there that they had to get, get out Sandy and they didn't quite do it in rapid succession, which would have been bad. It was quick, but it wasn't overly quick. Right. Um, so I, I, I think that was a poor move on, on their part. Another thing that really piqued my curiosity was the Michelle McCool thing where she gets drafted from the crowd. I think that's a cool idea. I loved that because her kids were there and yeah. then, uh, McAfee, McAfee's funniest line of the night was commenting on her wrestling in Ugg boots. <laughs> yeah. I think it would have been cooler if like she was dressed like a soccer mom. Cause she did have like yeah. tights on and like, you know, like a sports bra kind of top. Like it wasn't her wrestling gear, but I mean, you could my, work it. My God for, for a mom. Like, I mean, she is like the most, has the most athletic build. Like, I mean, she, she still looks in great. Yeah. Uh, but if she was wearing like you know like jeans and a blouse and then got in there and worked with the UGG boots, I think that would have been really really neat and play it off like oh well someone got injured and uh, we were just seeing who was here and we just decided to call Michelle McCool. I mean that would have been hilarious. So that was one thing where you knew it was a setup. Everybody knew what was going on, um, but I think it was a fun idea and and I didn't mind the idea. I didn't mind that she was in there for a while and then she got some some work. Um, and the other thing I really liked about this one, I think, was the damage control portion in the middle. I liked how dominant they were and how cocky Bailey was when she had 
you know, her two ladies behind her, you know, r- running things and all the people that they eliminated. Yeah. Um, I think that was a really strong portion, but also much like, you know, um, Judgment Day in, in the other Rumble, you know, as soon as the rival comes out, as soon as Edge gets in there, it all falls apart. As soon as Becky Lynch comes out, it all falls apart. Uh, but I did, I did like that. Um, I liked, uh, I did like, um, you know, a lot of people were kind of <clears throat> hyping it and teasing it. Um, I guess there maybe I guess there's been vignettes on Raw, uh, you know, con- confession time. I, I do not watch uh, Raw and SmackDown as avidly as I once did. But, uh, you know, Oscar came back as the dark Oscar character, the murder clown gimmick. Uh, so it's been called. Um, and, you know, I love yeah, I love the new makeup. I love the new look. Yes. Uh, I'm anxious to see what they do with it. Yeah, I thought the makeup and, and hair on her was cool. Um, I, you know, the. I don't watch a lot of the current product. There's a lot of these women that I haven't seen, uh, but I did like, uh, was it Raquel Rodriguez? Yeah. She, she impressed me. I liked her. Um, added with a lot of women from NXT. Yeah. Um, and if, if that proved anything, it's that I would say the majority of them are maybe not quite ready from a, uh, a gimmick standpoint or like, a, you know, being a name standpoint, there was one that Leonard and I think both liked, uh, Zoe Stark. Yeah. She seemed to have a lot of pizzazz and, uh, you know, she was ready to go. And I think impressed in her debut, uh, overall the, uh, the others, I, I don't know if they, if it went over as well as they wanted it. Roxanne Perez was another one I liked. She's the champion, I believe. Yeah. She's the champion. I, I would say those three from NXT, I really enjoyed. I know we were both dissing on B Fab when she, when she came out, right? Because nobody knew who she was. Nobody knew who she was. She's in that group, you know, uh, Hit Row. I realized that, but uh, still, no one knows who she is. So. Chelsea Green's elimination was kind of a surprise. Well, th- see, that was confusing. So, like, they bring her back. Yeah. I'm surprised that of all the fee free agents out there, like that's the one you're going to bring back. Okay, fine. But then you give her the Bushwhacker Luke entrance and elimination yes so i don't know what the plan with her is like maybe she just got maybe it was like rvd maybe it's a one-shot deal uh, yeah. who knows and then uh piper nevin came back as piper nevin and Thank not god. you drop Thank god i oh my god like triple h if he does nothing else in his booking capacity the fact that he's giving these people back their regular names to me was something i liked a lot Dewdrop. Yes, and, and the commentators very, you know, not subtly hinted at, you know, she used to be Dewdrop. It's like she will do drop in or stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it was like something that. to that effect. Yeah, no, I gave it, I think I gave it three stars because, again, it was so repetitive from the men's rumble. I knocked a quarter off of it. If they had flipped them and this was first and the men's were second, I probably would have went three and a quarter and three still because, again, the storyline parallels are so obvious too. I'd probably go two and three quarters here. Um, overall, I just thought it was a lot of filler. Like, you know, the middle part just didn't do anything for me. I like damage controls bit. I like the fact that Liv and Rhea Ripley were the iron women here. They both impressed a lot. Asuka, like there were some good moments overall. I don't think it was a secret to anybody who would win. Let's move on. Um, the next part of the show (coughs) was... A uh, musical performance by the band Hardy, who had one of the theme songs for the Royal Rumble, uh, sold out, I believe the song is called. And I've been to WrestleMania, and I saw uh, P. Diddy perform at the WrestleMania that I was at, which was cool for what it was. But I don't know why, but for whatever reason, musical performances and wrestling do not mix. I don't like not saying the wrestling fans don't like music. Obviously they do, but the setting and when you bring a band in, I just, for whatever reason, it doesn't mix. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that fans are not going to these shows wanting to see a musical performance. Maybe they don't want to be force fed a certain acts. Who knows what it is. In my opinion, it just very rarely goes well, unless they're singing at the beginning of WrestleMania, America, the beautiful, or the Star Spangled Banner somewhere else, or something to that effect. Other than that, when you have random performances in wrestling events, it just goes over like a fart in church. And this one, the song is eh to me. 
Um, and I think people were just ready for it to be done. And Leonard, you didn't watch this part, right? Uh, no, I went to bed after the women's rumble, and then the next morning I watched the last match. So that way I could fast forward through Hardy and then have to live it. Right. So, Leonard, we'll get back to you with a review of the Hardy song when he feels like it. Uh, so the main event was Roman Reigns against Kevin Owens for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. This came in at 19 minutes and 15 seconds. And the story here was not necessarily the match. I think this is Kevin Owens' third Royal Rumble main eventing with Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. um, they did a match where Chris Jericho was in a shark cage. I think it might have been even a TLC match. Um, they did a... I want to say it was a false count anywhere. I believe it was. That was during the pandemic when um, he got handcuffed. Yeah. So it's like now, you know, we have nobody else for Roman Reigns, so let's just restart a feud because that's just what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love Kevin Owens. I just think that they have run out of ideas for Reigns. The Rock isn't doing it. I think in the post-media scrum, I did see a clip from Triple H, and he basically hinted that, you know, he didn't think maybe the rock was fully interested in doing it, which makes sense to me, by Why the way. Really? It, right. So like people waiting for the rock to happen. I just don't think it's going to happen. They've run out of the idea for reigns. The best idea they have is right in front of them. And I honestly don't know if they're going to go with that. So, uh, reigns won this clean and you know, it was a decent match overall, but I think their other matches were better. Uh, I would probably give this three and a quarter stars. Um, before we get to the post, match events leonard uh, what did you what was your star rating here I, I i gave it three stars i thought it was very competent very standard for what they had done in the past i liked how the brutality and violence kind of built toward the end the last quarter of the match which led the course of the aftermath that we're going to talk about so i thought it was decent for them and even three stars for me feels a little generous uh but you know you can't say that it was bad necessarily it was just you know things that we've seen before right and so i agree uh, the storyline here is obviously with Sami Zayn. Um, and, like, it's telling when the camera work is as much on Sami Zayn on the outside as it is on the in-ring action. Mm -hmm. um, why? Because that's that's what people are invested in. Um, they're invested in Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns, not Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. I don't care what anybody says. So the events were they had uh, the bloodline cuff Kevin Owens to the ropes and proceeded to beat him pretty well. And they were waiting to, you know, we were kind of waiting to see what Sami Zayn was going to do. Reigns hands him a chair and basically keeps shoving him in the face, ordering him to hit Kevin Owens with the chair. And so instead, Sami Zayn finally turns on um, Roman Reigns and hits him in the back with the chair, but then proceeds to get beat down by most members of the bloodline. Um, and kind of left in the ring for dead. Jay Uso was the one who walked out of the ring. Um, so it's interesting to see that. We'll see what happens with that. Um, so here's my thoughts. And what's been talked about for a while is uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens getting a tag title run, maybe against the Usos. Would that be cool? Yeah. But to me, that's a waste of what you have in front of you. And I realize Sami Zayn doesn't look like Roman Reigns. He doesn't look like a traditional WWE champion in that sense. But he's the most over guy in the company. People want to see him beat Reigns' ass. Like, that's what they want to see. So badly. They don't want to see a tag title run. I don't care what anybody says. They just That's not what they want to see. So... Um, I think they are going to go the route of the tag team that you might see. Now, there was a poster that leaked for Elimination Chamber uh, with Sami Zayn on the poster in the Elimination Chamber. So maybe they'll have Reigns defended in the Elimination Chamber and maybe Sami Zayn will be a part of that. Um, I don't know what they're going to do there. Um, Leonard might be right about the splitting of the titles thing. We'll see. Um, so I was happy to see this chair shot. Everybody's been waiting for it. I am very skeptical of where they go from here, though. Um, so I'm tentative to say I'm excited. I don't know what they're going to do. Leonard, what are your thoughts? Well, I, the, the even part about that aftermath that I didn't like is Sami Zayn hits Reigns with a chair one time and then everyone stands around. Yeah. 
Like nobody did anything for a second, and that was odd. That didn't feel right. Uh, I, if they if they do put the bet on Sammy, it's going to be a Kofi Kingston thing. He's going to win it, and everyone's going to be happy. And the next day, they're going to be like, "Why does he have the belt?" <laughs> Bob Card Cardcore Harley going to be like, "How about give me the belt? And I'll be yeah." Here. That's kind of, kind of what it, I, I think. I think it would be a very short term win, and I think as soon as he wins, the heat's gone. As soon as he wins, nobody's going to care. But at the same time, he kind of has to win, right? Right. That, in order so, to win. so it's a catch twenty two situation. I don't. It, it's very hard right now. I think to guess what direction they're going to go in. Because uh, I, I, I would guess. They know. Yeah, I would guess the original plan was probably. Owens and Zayn versus the Usos and Reigns versus Rose. I, I would I would guess that was what they penciled in months ago. Right. But but at this point, that doing that title split, one night is for WWE titled Cody, one night's the universal title with Sammy. And they keep talking about how Roman wants to take time off. Well, this would be a great way. If he loses both belts, he's dead in the water. So, you know, let him take six months to a year off. Right. And then maybe come back at the Rumble next year and blow the place down. Uh, you know, it, it, it's in, it, again, there's so many scenarios, and you can see the good and the bad in, in, in all of them. No, I agree. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. We might come at you, uh, maybe we'll come at you with Elimination Chamber review. Maybe if I could convince Leonard to watch it. Um, we'll see. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, so thank you for joining us. Let us know what you thought of the show. If you agree with our star ratings or not, please let us know. Um, check out our shorter videos, segment surgery, random match reviews, and stupid questions. Um, for Leonard, my name is Chad. We will see you next time. And Alexa, we'll see you out.